worship service and we're looking forward to that. What we do need out of you for that, if you're planning on having your child or baby dedicated, if you would let my what self or Tammy or Brandy know, one of us three, if you will let us know, that way our sister Rita can have all the paperwork that we will need to uh, honor your child or your baby next Sunday morning. We want you to participate and be a part of that. I want to also announce that uh, uh, in lieu of questions of that, we're going to be having a water baptismal before long now. I've already got some that have been mentioning that to me, and so we're getting ready, and uh, we're going to be doing that here in the near future. So you pray about that. If that's something you feel like you'd like to do as a public expression of your faith in Jesus Christ, then please see me. And uh, on that one, you'll need to see me because there's a question, a couple of questions I need to talk to you about uh, before we do that. But we're glad you're here this morning. I think Justin has an announcement he needs to make as well. Yeah, we got our first softball game today at Freedom at 315. If you haven't paid for your shirts or hats, either see me or Miss Reed. Thank you all so much. Go out and support the team today. Maybe they won't get rained out. We're hoping not, but if, if something happens, they do get rained out. We'll try to get that out on all the media advertisement as quick as possible. But just keep your eyes open to the uh, internet and to, to your one call. And 
If we find out it's being canceled, then we'll let you know as soon as possible. But let's go out. You got a Shiloh shirt? Put it on today. Go out and support your team. Amen. It's all part of fellowship. Preacher, what in the world does uh, um, a ball game have to do with, with Jesus? Well, you just show up and we'll show you. It's a church league. We're excited about our team, and it doesn't matter whether we're, you know, we're we're catching fish. It doesn't matter if we're fine fish. It doesn't matter if we're getting eggs out of the chicken coop. I think everything we do, Lord, to do it for the Lord. Amen. That's what the Word of God says. Whatsoever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, we're going to dismiss our young people at this time. Kids ministry and nursery. Uh, we appreciate our youngins. Amen. We love them. Amen. Yes. senior citizen in this building, we love you. Amen. Uh, and if you're anywhere in between, I want you to know you're loved as well. We're glad you're a part of the family today. Amen. And we appreciate you being here and we are just believing God uh, to show you His glory here in the house of the Lord today. Amen. It's alright. We're going, we're going, we got time for our, our children. Amen. Uh, most of you guys by now know that I'm a little bit strange and a little bit out there. That's been a good place to sit, amen. You were thinking it. I can see it all over your face now. You know, I just work better if I've got visuals. And I'm learning that there are more and more people that have the same concept. And uh, it's easier on them if they have visuals. So uh, what I'm going to ask you to do, just simply because I know you've handled a few of these in your time, Mr. Charlie B., I want you to hold on to that throughout the remainder of this service today. You can lay it there on the pew, but if I get snatching on it, hold it, because I don't want it to come up and pop this beautiful young lady in the back of the head. Uh, I, don't, I'm gonna, I don't think I'm going, and I should have had you done this cord up, because it wanted to be tangled up like that. Uh, but anyhow, I'm going to use this as a little illustration there this morning. And uh, how many of you know God's good? Amen. How many of you know God's good even when we can't sense He's good? Amen. And I just want to tell you today, I know this morning's service was a little mishap. I'm just going to be honest with you. Uh, I used to get bent out of shape about church. I'm just going to be honest with you. Because I grew up in an atmosphere where church had to be a certain way. And if you missed dotting an I or you missed crossing the T, then everybody's been out of shape and we'd messed up and we'd flop. And I'll be honest with you, I brought a lot of that on into my ministry. And I felt like everything had to go just a certain way. And I just get bent all out of shape, Danny, if things didn't go the way I wanted them to go. If the piano player couldn't be here, then I just, my world was wrong. Amen. But how do you know God's still God? He's God on the mountain and He's God in the valley. He's God when everything's going right and when everything ain't going right. Now the biggest facade we got to tear down this morning is simply this. We're just human beings saved by the grace of God, but we're still human beings. And there's still going to be times in our life when we get up and we just ain't got it all together. Amen. There's a certain guy in here showed up to walk on a treadmill one time and he had... Two different tennis shoes on. One was a high platform tennis shoe and one was a, they sent him back home and told him, we can't do a walk on the treadmill and you with two different shoes on. Uh, so there's sometimes, I'm not going to tell you who that guy was. Most of you probably already know. But uh, he won't mean, but anyhow. But anyhow, uh, there's sometimes life just happens. There's sometimes we get up on Monday morning and the week just don't go the way we want it to go. There's sometimes we, you, you know, we show up in church and church don't even go like we planned it to go. I'm just going to be honest with you, church didn't go like I planned it to go this morning. <laughs> Aren't you glad I don't plan? God knows everything we have need of. He knows every breath in us and He knows the next one that we're going to get or what we're not going to get it. Amen. He's still God. Amen. Yeah. But what I do, I'm borrowing this this morning from a guy that used this illustration about uh, about 20 years ago, uh, Dr. Chan. Uh, he actually used a rope, but I'm a little bit different than that. I'm actually, I looked a rope this morning. I couldn't find one long enough, so I went and got your drop for it, see it. But I will get it back to you. Uh, I want you to just focus just a few moments on eternity. You can't. Because here's the deal. Everything that you and I have ever known, it has a beginning and it has an end. We try to wrap our mind around eternity, but we can't. Because everything that we've ever sensed, everything we've ever been a part of, everything we've ever enjoyed, everything we've ever endured, it has a beginning and it has an end. 
Nothing that you and I know or have ever known, it goes on for all of eternity. Amen? Amen. We think about Jesus, the Son of God, and we got an A.D. and a B.C. We got a beginning with him and we got an ending with him. But he goes on beyond that that we know and by the limitations of our natural mind, we can't even fully understand something without an end. But I just want you for a few moments, if you can, to picture with me that this drop cord is a line that represents eternity. Now you already know that it has a beginning and end because I told you that everything that we have has a beginning and end. I couldn't find anything that didn't have an ending to it. This is the only illustration that I got today. But this long line, it represents the space from beginning to end. God said, in the beginning. So we know that God pronounced upon us a beginning. Amen. Yeah. It wasn't his beginning because he said he was and he always has been. We can't understand that because everything we know has a beginning. But this long line, if you will, it signifies and it represents something without an end. What I want you to focus on today is this little tip. And because I didn't want to mess up her drop cord and I didn't have a rope, I went and got tape and I wrapped around the end to represent something. Now what this represents, this long line, represents in, in, in eternity. Something that goes on and on and on and on. If I'd have had a long enough rope or a long enough drop cord, we could have run it out in the building and run it out of your sight. And you wouldn't have been able to see the end, but in your mind, there would have been an end because that's all we know. But eternity goes on and on and on. I heard one man describe it like this, and this is what he said. He said, go as far in your mind as you can go. Sit down and rest a while and get up and go again. When you get tired, sit down and rest a while and go on a little further and you'll still not be there. What I'm trying to tell you today, this represents eternity and this tape in represents our life. We spend every waking moment on this speck of eternity. And it is our lifespan. The Bible described it like this. Our life is even as a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Eternity goes on and on and on. We're reminded every single day when we look in the newspaper, when we talk to friends, that there are people that are leaving here every day and they spent their entire life on this little space of time in comparison to eternity. They feel their life's desire on this space of time. And it led me to another word and it's called passion. The question I want to pose to you today is what is your passion. I want you just to meditate for a moment. What is my passion? One person with passion is better than 40 people merely interested in something. The question today, what's my passion? Heavenly Father, we give you the next few moments of our life. I thank you for every person you have entrusted into our care today. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come. I ask you to open up the windows of heaven and pour into us for the next few moments. As well, we pray for our young folks next door, God, that you would just minister to them in the unique way that they'll be taught about you. But Holy Spirit, our desire is that every single person, when they leave this place from the youngest to the eldest, will be able to say, I've heard about Jesus today. I know the reality of a living God that loves me with an unconditional love and provided for me for all of eternity. God, we ask your blessings upon us now to complete that that you've laid before us. It is in Jesus' name we pray and we do ask, God, if there's one in this building today that is not prepared for eternity, God, I pray that you prepare them now. And those of us that are prepared, I pray that you make us passionate about making sure that those that we come into contact with, that they are prepared. We ask all of these things, Father, now in accordance with your will. In Jesus' precious name.
we do pray. And the church said, Amen, amen. and Amen. I want to take you to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21 this morning. I want to read this verse of Scripture to you, and you'll notice the picture that I chose to put behind this uh, verse of Scripture today. Uh, it was a treasure chest that I just found online. When I searched treasures, that's what I found, so I copied it and pasted it, and there it is. What I really wanted to do was put my grandkids up there. I got four grandbabies, and when I'm talking about my treasure, that's my thought. Uh, that's my treasure. But I knew that wouldn't represent everybody in the building, so I wanted to get something that uh, maybe everybody could relate to. Uh, but I really wanted to put my grandbabies up there because, you see, that's my treasure. That's where my heart is. I love them, and I want to talk about them, and I want to show you pictures of them. And I remember when our, our first grandchild was born, uh, I remember on the way home from the hospital, on the way to the hospital, we had made this statement, Tammy and I. Now, listen, we're not going to be those grandparents like Bruce and Wendy. We're, we're not going to be that grandparents. You know, we're not going to be those grandparents that all, all that we do is show everybody our grandbabies pictures and make them think that they ought to think that that's the most beautiful thing that's ever been graced on planet Earth. We're not going to do that. Okay? Okay. So on the way home, after our first grandchild was born, we had pulled out of Cape Fear Valley Hospital and had got back on Owen Drive and I got my phone out, and I'm over here hiding it from Tammy. I got this picture, and I'm trying to post it. Driving down Owen Drive now, I'm not in any way, you know, recommending that you do that. Put a warning out there. I don't recommend that. Okay, you didn't hear the preacher say that. But I'm trying to post this grandchild of mine's picture. Not wanting Tammy to realize that I've reneged on our promise not to be that grandparent. All the while, I'm trying to check out traffic, trying to get the picture post, and I catch out of my peripheral vision my wife, and she's got her phone turned around in the seat. And she's trying to, and I, I looked at her and I said, well, that went out the window. Yeah. So from that moment on, we just let down the curtains, and, you know, that's just the way it is. What is our passion, okay? What I want you to realize and see this morning is that God designed that we have a passion. And he created us to be passionate people. Uh, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let me take you back to the timeline now. Because you see, we've got all of eternity out here before us, but yet we focus every waking moment on this moment of time. And a lot of us, especially once we get a little age on us, uh, like some folks in here, um, we, we, we begin to focus on this end out here. Uh, we call that the golden years. So one man told me recently, he said, I ain't found them the gold out here on this end. Uh, but we call it the golden years. We call it retirement. Uh, how many of you in here can, can dream and think, when I retire? I, I get tickled at my daughter right now and my son-in-law because they love to camp. And by the way, everybody can laugh at Jeff. My son-in-law because uh, my grandson's in the Boy Scouts. He's got a brand new camper at home, a brand new 30 some foot camper at home, and he was at sleep last night during that thunderstorm in a tent with the Boy Scouts when he's got a brand new camper at home. That, that's just hilarious. But at any rate, <laughs> you gotta love them. We focus on this end. We got all of eternity out here, but we spend everything thinking about this moment. What's gonna bring me happiness? What's gonna provide for me? What can I get? What can I achieve? And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves focused on this very end tip out here. Oh, when I retire. <laughs> Y'all probably said it since you come back off that. When we retire, we're going to cruise all the time. <laughs> you, you know, we're focused on that very end, but yet we've got all of eternity out there before <laughs> us, and we very seldom do we ever give any thought to that line, that timeline of eternity. You see, you talk to anyone for a few minutes and it takes not long to determine what is important in their lives. If you talk to me as a pastor, uh, if you're not careful, and it seems like this has been a lot lately, you'll think the only thing I care anything about is raising money. Because we've had to raise a lot of money. And it just seemed like I've never been a person that was interested in raising money, but it seemed like that's what God called me to do in the last two or three years. 
We're just spending time raising money. And, and if you're not careful, I know many of you will think, well, the only thing that preacher ever cares about is raising money. How he's going to pay for that building? How he's going to do this? How he's going to do that? But, honey, I come by to stop a minute and pause and tell you something this morning. My heart is not in raising money, okay? I want you to understand today that my heart is not about raising money. It's not about any of the other things that I'm concerned with other than one passion that God has placed in my heart, and that is a passion for souls to be saved. Amen. You see, our church is not in the carpet business. We're not in the roofing business. We're not in the floor business. We're not in the cabinet business. We're, we're not in the internet business. We're not in the bus business. We're not in any business other than, listen, guy, we're not even in the cooking business. Wait a minute now, preacher. You stepped out there on holy ground now. Much as we cook, much as we feed people, we ain't in the cooking business. Absolutely not. We're in the soul winning business. Amen. And everything we do should be about a person that is lost and undone. And we need to become passionately concerned about those around us that don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Because God said He put in me an earthen treasure. Amen. That was given through this earthen vessel. Amen. That was placed in me. That was joy unspeakable and full of glory. How I many of you would see your neighbor in need and would turn your head and walk the other way? How many of you would see an elderly lady beside of the road with a flat tire and say, I ain't got time to mess with that? How many of you would see a little baby back in the corner or a grown woman with a spider <laughs> had her hemmed up in the corner? <laughs> You won't hear early this morning. That don't mean nothing to you. But there's one woman in here. She'll react when she sees a spider. I'm here. Hey, no. I mean, you know, there's a holy, there, there's a holy grail for a woman. It's called her pocketbook. My daddy went. I'm telling you, she walked in and a spider fell off the door and fell in that pocketbook and she dumped it upside down right in the floor. I'm gonna tell you who she was. Dumped everything in there. Out. I'm standing there looking at it, and I look at my wife. My wife's down there helping her up, and I'm like, ladies, I'm sorry. I want to help you, but I can't. I said, God, my daddy told me when I was a little bitty boy, you don't mess with what's in a woman's pocket. I mean, that's like the Holy Grail. I, I ain't touching that stuff, amen. So she got it up and put it back in there. I, I said all that to say, how many of us would see a little child back in the corner by a spider and want to pause a moment and help them, amen? But yet we have the greatest gift that has ever been given to mankind, and we are allow ourselves to walk by people on a daily basis that are broken and are hurting and are destitute and need somebody just to stop and say, hey, I love you. I stopped by today just to tell you that somebody cares about you today. Amen. I want you to understand today, everybody in this building is of utmost importance today. And you and I have been given a treasure in Jesus Christ that the world needs to know about. Amen. Amen. You see, the church is in the soul business. Amen. Yes. If you want your life to count for something, you're going to have to invest your life into souls. Amen. Amen. Because do you realize today souls is the only thing you're going to be able to take with you? Let's right. <coughs> pause right there a minute. Think about that, guys. Everything else that we're spending that lifespan for, everything else that we're focused on, them houses, them cars, <laughs> that 401k, you know the reason why they call it 401k? I figured this out on my own. <laughs> uh, that's got you trouble at the time. Because that 401 will cause you to kill yourself if that's where your hope is. Amen. I mean, you're glad today your hope ain't in a number somewhere. Amen. I'm glad today that my hope is not in that that I had. I remember one time I was going to retire from this company. And they told me how much money I had in that thing. I got all excited. I mean, beads of sweat fell out on my head. And I thought to myself, I ain't never held that much money in my hand. The man said, you ain't going to hold it this time, do you? I said, oh, okay. <laughs> he said, because if you hold it, it's going to cost you. He said, it's going to cost you a third of it. I said, I ain't going to hold it, sir. He said, you can send it on to another bank. He said, it won't cost you nothing. I said, let's send it on over there. I ain't got to hold it. And I had a month to get it out of there. Kevin, be careful what you put your hope in. Because I had that money in there, 
and before I could get that money transferred out of one account into another account, I think they got wind that I was wanting. In 30 days, how much was it, Tammy? Six thousand dollars I lost in thirty days. Now I don't know how my, how many little Debbie cakes you eat in a week, but it ain't enough. <laughs> Most of you know that I sell little Debbie cakes for a living, and, and you know when them things is a quarter and fifty cent a piece, you got to sell a lot of them to get six thousand dollars. Okay, uh, you got to get a lot of help to get you know that much money at one time. And I lost that much in thirty days. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> that's all I could think. I, I, I come by to tell you today the only thing you're going to be able to take with you is the souls that you win for the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah, but preacher, I'm not a pastor. It's not my responsibility. Amen. Church, I want to tell you something. Sheep beget sheep. Amen. Souls beget souls. You realize that person that you're living a life before, you're, wor you're wording out the living word of God before them every Amen. single day. Amen. Hello? Guys, I want to tell you something. When I get my back to the wall and I get in trouble, I don't call Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John to pray for me. You know what I do? I go find me a good old sister that I believe can get in touch with God. And I say, Tricia, will you remember me in prayer today? I'm having one of them kind of days when the T's won't cross and the I won't dot. But I am persuaded that God that began a good work in me is going to fulfill it. Amen. But I need you to come along beside of me today and pray me through. I need you to encourage me today. I need you to lift me up today. I need you to help me through this day. Can I count on you to be praying for me? Do you realize today the only thing in the world you're going to be able to take with you is the soul that you win for Jesus Christ. Amen. The only thing that God the Father is going to ask you about when you get there. He's not going to ask you what car you drove. He ain't going to care how many square foot was in your house. He ain't even going to care what retirement plan you have. He's going to want to know one thing. What did you do with my son? Amen. What did you do about those that were lost and undone? Amen. I want to tell you, church, it's time we get mission minded. It's time we begin to realize that if we don't sound the alarm, that hell will overrun itself. Amen. The Bible said hell hath enlarged itself. Amen. God needs to get a passion driven in some of our hearts and our lives and realize that we have been placed here to intervene in people's lives and let them know that there's another way. Let them know that there's a God in heaven that loves them. Let them know what Jesus Christ has done in your life. Amen. How many of you in this building today saved? Amen. And you are commissioned by God the Father to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's your calling. Amen. God said it was your reasonable service. Amen. Amen. You see, we don't have the right to determine who gets to hear the gospel. Hello? Amen. You see, if we're not careful, we can fall into that idolatry of believing, well, they don't look like me. They're not from the same side of the track. They don't worship like I worship. They're from a different background. I don't care where they're from. I'm interested in where they're going. Amen. 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 I, I, I'm not interested in fighting over our differences. Amen. I'm interested in us coming together and agreeing on what we can agree on and bless somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't believe it's going to be a denominational heaven. I don't believe we're going to get to heaven and the Baptists are going to be over there and the Methodists over there and Pentecostals over there and the free will are going to have their own corner. I, I just believe we will get to heaven. We're all going to be blood-bought children of God, redeemed by the grace of God, redeemed by the cause of the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And I once was lost, but now I am found. Amen. I was once on my way to a devil's hell, but because of what Jesus Christ did for me at a place called Calvary, I am redeemed today. Not because of what I've done, but because of what he done. Amen. My obligation is to tell somebody what he has done for me. Amen. Amen. Because I want to tell you, we're all concerned about that tip, but God's concerned about that eternity because that person sitting beside of you at your workplace, amen. That man or woman that calls uh, your home their home, amen. That son or daughter of yours that you've prayed for for so long, amen. They're going to spend eternity somewhere. Are you hearing me this morning? There's going to be a heaven to win or a hell to shun. But I'm telling you today, there's no middle ground, amen. I know it's not popular anymore, and you won't turn on on the Destiny Channel and hear it many times. But I come to tell you today, you're either going to heaven and live with God for all of eternity, or you're going to hell and gnash teeth and wail your eyes for all of eternity. Amen. I heard a man some, some one day say, hey, we're going to have a good time down there. No, you're going to be through with this and you're going to live out eternity in a place where you'll never see any more joy. There'll never be anything there but wailing and gnashing of teeth 
on the bar stool, amen. amen. I love you anywhere you want to go, amen. I carried a man one time. We were out riding around selling tickets, raising money for the church. We were selling tickets. He said, pull in here, preacher. This was a few years ago when they had them, they still have them, I don't know, them gambling houses called them Internet Cafes. That's what called them. He said, pull in here, preacher. He said, I need to run up in here. I got, I got some friends. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, we need to pull up in here. He said, I got to sell these guys up in here some tickets. Now, see, here in our spiritual, I got a redneck this morning. I got out of the shower and the neck was <coughs> Being out in that sunshine, I had on one of them low cut t shirts that Shiloh bought me. <coughs> I had to pay for it, but they bought it for me. And uh, back in my neck, read it, burn it. Well, some of us got spiritual starch around our neck. We think if people don't look like we look, they don't act like we act. If we don't. Come on. The Bible said, let our yay be yay. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I'm interested in where you're going, folks. And I'm going to love you all the way there, but I refuse to go to hell with you. That's right. I'm not going, I love that little lady right there, and as good as anything that draws breath, I remember, I'm not going to go to hell for it. Amen. I've been given a unique opportunity by God the Father. He said, I'm going to give you my greatest gift that's ever been given to man. His name is Jesus Christ. You receive him. You don't have to go to hell. I want to tell you today, you don't have to go to hell. Now let me clarify something. If you've set up in a, what did I call them things just a minute ago? Internet cafe. If you set up in one of them this week, if they still got them, I don't know. I'm not throwing stones at you this morning because that's not between me and, and, and you. That's between you and God, and I don't care. Preach. Well, I just, I just mean that. The Bible says you pray and you talk to God and God will direct your path. Amen. Amen. My, my responsibility is to tell you who Jesus is and that he can help you get there. Amen. Amen. It ain't my job to get you there. It's my job to get you to the man that can get you there. Amen. God will clean you up. God will straighten you up. Amen. I had a man tell me not long ago, he said, Preacher, you all up on that internet. What you going to do with them homosexuals walk up in your church? I said, I'm going to do the same thing that I've done the last time that a homosexual couple come to my church. I'm going to love on them. I'm going to love on them. I'm going to love on them. And I'm going to preach the word unadulterated. Amen. And I'm going to still love on them. And if they don't want to change their way, they'll get so uncomfortable, they'll go another way. Amen. But I'm going to love on them while they're leaving. Amen. 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 All preachers. You're lowering the standard. No, I ain't. I'm holding it. That's what God said. You know what God said? How are we going to be known? By the love we have one to another. Amen. God didn't call them, and I can't neither. Amen. There ain't none of you in here look like me. And I know you're saying, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's a good place to shout. But if I'm going to get bent out of shape because you don't look like me, because you don't act like me, because you don't talk like me, where, where, where does the segregation start? Eh? You, my brother, amen. It ain't got nothing to do with the color of your skin. It's got to do with the condition of our heart, amen. Yes, it's all about who we are in Christ yes. Jesus, amen. Yes. There ain't no difference in them two and this one here. That's of the world, amen. 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 We're bought by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed by the very grace of God. Hallelujah. God looks upon the heart. He don't look upon the outward, man. I had one of our brethren in the church tell me an old story yesterday. And, and, and he's married to a Native American woman. And he said the law stopped him one time because this man had kidnapped two little girls. And there he was going into a wooded area with Two little Indian girls. He's a white man. <laughs> he said, the law was all up into that. Man. You see, the world looks on the outward, amen? The world looks at you and says, oh, you, 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 you're supposed to be a child of God. Yeah, and we all are, amen? amen. Hey, some of us just ain't quite got there yet. Yeah. That includes all of us that are sitting in this building. Now, them that went home to be with him this week, and he looked at them, and if they had made their peace with him, you know what they said? Well done, thy good 
say if you ain't joined the church. I didn't say if you didn't show up on Sunday morning. I said if you ain't accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You know what he's going to say? Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. You spent too much time focused on your moment in time, and you won't worry about eternity. Depart from me. Church, we need a passion. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ. Let me give you a couple more verses of Scripture. We're going to go to the buffet. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Amen. Look at it with me. What good will it be for a man if he gains what? The whole world. Yet he forfeits his soul. Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Honey, I want to tell you, it don't matter what you got in that moment of time. What matters is what's going to take place in eternity. I'm going to ask you a question here in a few moments, folks, and I want you to be pondering in your mind what you would have to say to him today. Church, I want to tell you, we better get passionate about something, and that something needs to be that that we can take with us for all of eternity. Amen. You see, you're only free from your responsibility to win the loss when you meet a man or a woman for whom Jesus did not die. that right there just to sink. When I wrote that down, I just sat there for a minute and held my pen. And I didn't write nothing else for a few minutes. When God dropped that in my spirit and he said, son, you're not responsible for a soul when you find one that I didn't die for. I was said, for God so love yes. the world. Amen. He didn't say he so loved the church. He didn't say so love them to look right, them to talk right, them to act right, them to walk right. That's right. I would ask you to raise your hand, all of you that have been perfect this past week, because I don't want to embarrass you, Saints. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, I don't want the rest of you lying up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Here it is. You might as well get real with God, because He done got real with you over 2,000 years ago. You know what he said? He said, you can't keep that law that I give you. You wanted a law, and I give you a law. Aren't you glad God will give us what we want? He said, give us the very desires of our heart. His children begged and pleaded for a long time. Hey, we want a king. We want to be like everybody else. You don't want a king. Yeah, we want a king. We want to be like, no, you don't want a king. Yeah. You know what God done? He gave him a king. Where would they go then? Bondage. <laughs> they making bricks to build somebody else a house. That's what the devil wants to do to you. He wants to enslave you to sin, and he'll put you to making bricks to build somebody else a house. You hear me? <laughs> but to God, I serve, said he come to set us free and to make us free indeed. And the Bible says, whom he sets free is free. Yes. Amen. Yes. No longer bound by the things of this present world. I'm glad today I've been made free. Amen. I didn't say I've been made perfect. I said I've been made free. Amen. Amen. There's a difference between perfection. You see, we're looking to be perfect, and God said, I just want you to get free. Amen. Amen. Where sin no longer has any dominion in your life. Amen. He didn't say you won't go sin no more. He said, but it won't have dominion in your life anymore. Amen. Because he said, when it does, I'm going to give you an advocate. Amen. And you can call on the name of Jesus. Amen. And he'll redeem you right where you're at. Amen. He said, I ain't giving you a right to go on and sin no more. He said, that'd be foolish. Amen. Grace ain't a, ain't a privilege just do any way we want to do it and go to heaven. I know a lot of people in the world believe that, but I, I, I mean, you know, you just take that up to God. I mean, I'm not going to stand here and, you know, cool straws with you this morning. I'm going to just tell you this right here. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve Him seven days a week. I didn't say we were going to be perfect seven days a week because, hey, some days we just mess it all up. Hey, some days we don't even look like the church. Y'all part of my family now. <laughs> Boy, y'all getting so boastful out there. I want you to remind you, you call me Brother Smith. Y'all call me Brother Eddie, amen? Y'all part of the family now. We all in this together. See, we all brothers and sisters. I go to messing up over here. And we don't want to have no part of that anymore, amen? Help me, old God. I got to get passionate about the right thing, amen? I got to get passionate about the right thing. Now listen here. We can all quote that John 3, 16, can't we? We got it, ain't we? They got that in the football stadium on Sunday. Right when church is going on. They got it past it up there. About every time you watch a football game, somebody got it past it up there. Well, what about 317? Have you read it? 
Let me tell you what it says. It said, but that the world through him might be saved. Did you get that? Now, I know what he said in 16. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But then in 17, you know what he said? He said, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. Amen. Ain't our job to call them. Ain't our job to pick them up. It ain't our job to sort them out. It ain't our job to pick and choose. It's our job to tell people who Jesus is. Love them. We got a man sitting here right now. He done been in jail this morning. Done been in prison this morning. And he was there telling people what Jesus can do. Amen. So when they get out of there, they don't know which way to go. Right. And whether they choose to go that way or not, that ain't his job. His job is to tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. If he called him to do that, you know what he called you to do? Wherever you roll up this afternoon and you roll up tomorrow, you better be telling somebody that God comes. Well, now, preacher, we can't all walk around like that all the time. Some days we just don't feel like it. I agree. Some days I don't feel like it. I'm just telling you, some days I don't feel like it. A man walks up to me and says, How you feeling today, preacher? And I look at him and say, Man, I feel like a crisp $100 bill. And my back hurt me so bad I can't even draw another breath. Or my knees cracking every time I move. Kevin, you look at me like I've lost my ever-loving mind. You get out on that softball field this evening, and you're going to say, hey, man, yeah. <laughs> Your wife ain't done even got in the game yet. She didn't get out there practicing. And look at her. I'm so glad some of you old ones opted out with me. Hey, man, look at them young ones. Over there. They're walking around, dragging their feet. They ain't even got to a game yet. They just been practicing. Shannon's about to back out. I bet her right out. <laughs> Might as well laugh at herself. I mean, God's laughing at us. God's laughing at us. He says, son, I love you. But that ain't all he is right there. Amen. You better get your focus on that eternity out there. Amen. 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 Will you stand to your feet this morning? Listen, guys, I'm going to laugh with you. We'll laugh. We'll laugh. I believe we'll laugh. Amen. I believe we want to have a good time. I believe we want to fellowship. I, I, I really do. I believe it's okay. Amen. I, I don't believe God expects us to be so stiff that we can't even operate and function in this present world. Folks, I want to tell you something. That's heresy. I mean, there are days you get up and you just ain't got it all together. I mean, you, you can say amen or you can hold your peace. But there are days. I ain't got to follow you around and know it. There are days you don't feel all that right about <coughs> I've told you, I've confessed to you. There are days I stood in this pulpit and I felt like I could take a water gun and I could bar, bar, uh, bar, bar the doors of hell. Amen. That's the way I felt under that anointing. And there are other days I feel like I could take that water gun and shoot my own self right in the head. <laughs> and there are days that it's like that. But God still got on them days. God is still God on them days. And I want to tell you, you may be in this building this morning and you may say, Preacher, you know, have you never had nobody just say it just like that? <coughs> it don't matter that you ain't perfect. God said we're to strive unto perfection. He didn't say we were going to be there are going to be days when we miss it. There are going to be days when we just we say things that we ought not to say. Well, now, preacher, that ain't all that spiritual. Well, you need to read the book. Mm -hmm. Paul said it best, and I quote it real often. The very thing I intend not to do, that's what I found myself doing, and the thing I intended not to do, bam, there I am. I mean, we might as well get real. There are days that we're like that, amen? Now, I want to walk around here, and I want all y'all to think I got it all together, but you already know I ain't. <laughs> so ain't no sense of me trying to hide behind some facade. There are days when I just ain't got it all together, but God still got them. Yeah. And you know the difference in me now and the difference in me then? It's just a thin line, and I'm going to tell you the only line it is is called the blood of the Lamb. Because God, I will tell you something today, guys. Outside the blood, I'm just as lost today as I've ever been in my life. 
If it weren't for the blood of Jesus Christ, I'd still be on my way to hell. Not because of my perfection, not because of all the right that I've done, but because of what Jesus Christ did for me at a place called Calvary. And on that day when I bowed my knee and I looked towards heaven and I said, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And I invited him into my heart and into my life. And on that day, I made him a promise. I said, God, from this day forward, with your help, I will do my very best. You hear what I said? That's the prayer I prayed. I don't know what you prayed. I said, God, I'll do my very best to live for you and serve you. So you mean you've never failed him since then? No. There were some days I didn't do my best. And I'm going to say something else here about Rock Your World this morning. There were some days my best won't good enough. Because I just fell short. I was doing the best, Sister Michelle, I felt like I could do, but it just won't do. We're humans. But we serve a God that can go when we can't go. That can do what we can't do. But we got to let him. And I'm asking you this morning, if today, just for a moment, give me, give me 60 more seconds. Just for today. 60 seconds. Right now, with your eyes closed, right where you're standing. If right now God decided He was going to take the breath out of your body, cut it off. Do you realize, I don't know how long, but somewhere between the next minute to the next five minutes, you wouldn't be on this side anymore? Guys, I say this all the time. There's more about the hereafter that I don't understand and I even pretend to understand. <clears throat> but when you open your eyes, you're going to see God. I promise you that. You're going to see God. And he's going to have one question. This is going to be it. He's already going to know the answer. But he's going to say, What? you do with my son? Did you receive him or did you reject him? Now guys, I'll laugh with you. I'll talk with you. We'll get out there and have a good time. We'll cut up. We'll laugh at one another. You can pick at me because I'm sure enough we'll pick at you. But right now, this is as serious as I've ever been in my life. Because when you open your eyes in the presence of God, there's not going to be a maybe so. There's not going to be a hope so. <clears throat> He's going to want to know, what did you do? Did you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or did you reject Him? Right now, if you're standing in this building, I'm about to ask you a question. And this is not for my sake. This is for your sake. If you're in this building right now, and the breath went out of your body, and the next breath you took, you opened your eyes, and you're standing toe to toe to God the Father. Whatever that is, we can't imagine it because God said it ain't never even entered our mind. Are you ready to stand there? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you absolutely sure that you are ready to stand before God just like you you're absolutely sure that you're ready to stand there. I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand. I'm not asking you to do that for me. Just go ahead and raise your hand because you're signifying to God. Just raise it and put it right back down. I'm not looking around because it's not my concern. That's between you and God. But listen, if you come to raise that hand, then I want to ask you one more question. What you going to do? Are you going to say, No, Lord? And are you going to walk out that door? Are you going to risk all this eternity for that little moment that you're holding on to right now? It's a vapor, guys. And 
is fleeting. Today, are you ready to meet him? And if you can raise your hand to that question, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to step out from your seat and make your way to the altar. Preacher, are you going to make me walk out in front of everybody else? No, I'm not. God is. Because this is what he said. You're ashamed of me before these guys. Then I'm going to be ashamed of you. <coughs> is there one in this building today that you're not ready to stand toe to toe with God? And you just for the next 60 seconds want to be honest with God and say, God, I need you. I know it's a little embarrassing. So if you don't want to take that step by yourself, would you just reach over and tell that person beside of you and say, listen, would you go with me? You know what? I believe they'll come to you if you ask me. The good news is you won't have to walk alone. You're not going to walk along that how about Jesus is going to come to you. Is there one? I don't want to leave this place without knowing that you know that everything's all right before you and God. I don't know how to break it down any plainer than I'm breaking it down to you guys. But every one of us in this building, listen, Bill Robinson, how many of you know him? Duck Dynasty, Bill Robinson. Bill Robinson preached a message in Texas one time, and this is what he said. He said, you're going to die. Every one of you sitting under the sound of my voice right here, right now, you are going to die. Your first birth got you in this world, but you need a second birth to get you out of this. Is there one? I don't want to pull in the lifeline if there's one of you that are standing there and you're debating in your mind. <coughs> is there one? When I stand in the presence of God, He's going to want to know what my passion was, and I'm not going to be able to say it against my grandfather. They were the most important thing in the world, and as important as they are today, they can't be the most important thing. Jesus Christ. Is there's anything in your life that is more important than you to begin to do right now. One more minute. I just feel in my spirit that there's somebody in this building that God is pointing with you right now and saying, Would you please come? What are they going to think of me, preacher? I don't care what they're going to think of me. And if they're going to think anything other than rejoicing with you, they, their heart ain't in the right place. They need to get in here. Is there one? Is there one? Quickly. Holy Spirit. I've done all that I know. Come as far as I know to go. It reaches a point in time, God, regardless of how we feel, we just have to lay it in your hands. And we have to turn it over to you. And we have to realize. I'm so relentless, God, because I know what I'm going to walk out of here feeling like today. God, I don't know whether you choose to give them another opportunity or not, but I'm asking you, God, to be long-suffering with you. I can't imagine what that's going to be like when I stand in your presence. I don't want to stand there without Jesus. May the Lord richly bless you today. I want to ask Brother Linwood if he will come close out the service. I want to remind uh, you.